EA recently invited us to check out their new hunting game, Wild Hearts. We were able to play through a demo that included three different targets to hunt. Now, it's important to note that Wild Hearts is still in development, so things can change significantly from what we saw in the demo. That said, we really enjoyed the game and think it has a ton of potential. So what exactly is Wild Hearts? Set in a fantasy world based on feudal Japan, Wild Hearts is a game about hunting increasingly powerful creatures known as kimono. Kimono are typically based on real world creatures, but they fuse with elements of nature to create monstrous foes. As you hunt kimono and forage the land, you collect materials that you can use to upgrade your weapons and armor. You play as a hunter who has tapped into an ancient power. You create constructs known as karakuri on the fly in combat. Using karakuri you can build a tower to get the high ground on an enemy, or combine karakuri to create a strong wall to block enemy attacks. Having a hard time keeping up with a kimono? Create a spring karakuri to get a short burst of speed so that you can stop them in their tracks. As you play through the game, you'll unlock more Karakuri and Karakuri combinations. Some will become staples that you will use in every hunt, and some are extremely situational. Hunting games have a reputation for being extremely grindy and needing to repeat hunts you've already done. If you're a completionist looking to craft every item in the game, you will definitely need to repeat hunts. But I found I received enough materials to keep a single weapon fully upgraded just by progressing through the story. Grinding definitely isn't for everyone, and I think it's good that this game doesn't appear to make it a requirement. Wild Hearts does a great job of incorporating the key elements of a hunting game. The hunts are fun, the weapons have vastly different mechanics, and the kimono feel menacing. But where Wild Hearts really stands out is the world building. I absolutely love this, and I think it needs to become a staple in the genre. When I first saw hunters building boxes and jumping off of them, I thought this seemed like a silly gimmick. But then I realized one simple thing that had me do a complete 180. It turns out that the things that you build become a persistent part of the world and last between hunts. In real life, hunters will set up hunting blinds and traps in their hunting grounds to get an edge on their prey. While you can't know exactly where the fight will take you, you can set up useful Karakuri and advance in areas where you think you'll be likely to fight Kimono. This type of advanced preparation brings a whole new element to the game. But that's not really what pulled me in. What really won me over was the traversal utility Karakuri. The biggest example of the utility here is the ability to build zip lines and tents. Tired of having to walk from one end of the map to the other? Build a tent where you hunt most commonly and it'll make a fast travel point. Tired of having to run across gaps or scale mountains? Build a two-way zip line. Place zip lines next to each other to create routes that you can traverse quickly. You can even make signs to welcome hunters who join you in multiplayer. I absolutely love this. The combat of hunting games is really appealing to me, but having to travel the same routes over and over gets tiring rather quickly. With properly laid out ziplines and tents, you can travel from one end of the map to another extremely quickly, which gives us more time for what we really want to do. Smacking oversized creatures with oversized weapons. Today we're going to take a look at three of the weapons available in Wild Hearts. The katana, the bow, and the umbrella. The game starts you off with a katana, a very well-rounded weapon with plenty of combos. You effectively have a light rapid attack, a medium strength attack, and a slow but powerful attack that can interrupt enemies. You can chain these attacks together to create combos. The katana also has a meter shown in the bottom left. Once the meter is full, you can break your katana blade into separate pieces and attack with it like a whip. I found that the katana was a fantastic weapon to learn with, but I often fell into a trap of starting combinations that I couldn't get out of, and once that happened I was a sitting duck for the kimono. The bow is a very simple weapon, but users must take time to learn the abilities to use it properly. There are effectively two different types of arrows, Haya and Otoya. Haya arrows will stick into their target. When an Otoya arrow hits, it will do extra damage based on the Haya arrow stuck in the target. The bowstring can be pulled back to power up the shots, but the bow can also be bolstered up in between shots to effectively level up the next shot. Shots act completely differently based on how bolstered the bow is. For instance, bolstering a bow once will cause the next attack to be a burst of arrows. Bolstering the bow twice when using high arrows will cause you to launch your arrows high into the air and have them rain down on your target. When using the Otoya arrows, bolstering the bow twice allows you to fire a devastatingly powerful resonant Otoya that can deal a ton of damage. And finally we have my favorite, the Umbrella. I really didn't expect the Umbrella to be that interesting of a weapon, after all who thinks of Mary Poppins as an elite hunter? But you know what, the umbrella felt super intuitive, you had spinning attacks and thrusting attacks. Comboing the spinning attacks is a great way to climb up in the air, which allows you to unleash a powerful plunging attack into the kimono. As you continue to attack the kimono, your umbrella will charge up and become more powerful. And oh yeah, did I mention the umbrella has a parry ability? Yeah, I definitely think the umbrella is going to be the go-to weapon for beginners. 
So the big question on everyone's mind, is Wild Hearts worth buying? I think this game shows a lot of promise. All of the key elements for a great hunting game are there, and the Karakuri element is particularly innovative. But what I saw was not a finished game. I'm really hoping that as the game gets closer to release, there's a demo that everybody can download and play together. I did really enjoy this game. If I didn't have to travel so soon, I would have spent the entire demo period glued to my computer just playing it learning everything there is to learn about it. But I really do think that there is a very high potential that this game is going to be fantastic when it comes out. So who should play this game? I think if you're currently playing a hunting game, you're into Monster Hunter, you're into Takaiden, you're into Dauntless, this is a game that you really want to keep your eye on. And I know there's going to be a bunch of people out there saying, hey, I've already got my hunting game, I don't want to go to another one. And to you guys I would say, competition is a good thing. Right now, Monster Hunter effectively has a monopoly on the hunting genre. Now, there are other games, yes, but none of them have reached the global impact level of Monster Hunter. With EA coming in and backing this game, I really think this gives them a huge opportunity to get in the spotlight and attract people towards the game. And if people are attracted to this game, they play it, I see not only a bright future for this franchise, I also see a brighter future for the hunting game genre. So as for us, we're definitely looking forward to picking up copies of Wild Hearts, and we'll see you out on the hunt February 17th. Over the next few days, we'll be uploading more footage that we captured during the preview window. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you're interested in keeping up to date with it. Thanks.